America's ash trees. From forests to front lawns, their majestic appearance adds distinctive beauty to our North American landscape. In the United States, we have over 8 billion ash trees, most in the Midwest and northeastern regions of the country. Within Pennsylvania, we have approximately 200 million ash trees across our landscape. But sadly, not for long. Ash trees across the U.S. are in grave peril. They face the threat of imminent extinction, all because of a dangerous pest that's smaller than a penny. There's an invasive insect species that's attacking the ash trees in America, and it's pretty deadly, and we need to make you aware of it. Emerald ash borer is native to parts of Asia. It was first discovered in the United States in Michigan back in 2002, and it eventually worked its way over here to York County. So in the last 13 years, this insect has gone from never even having a name before to spreading across our country. So far, it's been documented in 22 states and a couple of Canadian provinces. It's currently throughout Pennsylvania, killing ash trees left and right. We're finding it nearly every day here in York, Adams, Cumberland County areas. Definitely needs to be treated if someone wants to keep and maintain their trees around their property. I've heard estimates of you know 50 to 60 million trees so far in the United States. Eradication efforts are sort of a lost cause now. Have, there's nobody trying to do that now. And we wanted to educate you a little bit about it and uh, see what we can do to perhaps stop it or preserve some of the ash trees. One of the first things that the beetle is going to do is uh, cause damage to the upper crown of the tree. So a homeowner could look for dead branches might be one of the first signs. There are ways to treat for emerald ash borer. It, there are some insecticides labeled for use that can be applied. Other than that, it's people will end up having to take their trees down if they don't make applications. Trees will develop something called epicormic sprouts. These are sprouts that aren't really from a normal bud. They're buds that are hidden beneath the bark of trees. And when damage uh, occurs to a tree, it'll try and protect itself and try and keep living. Trees need leaves to make to do photosynthesis and make energy. The only way it sort of becomes a non-issue is when it finishes off all the host plants in an area and just sort of spreads out from there, but it's definitely going to become well established throughout the continental United States. The ash tree uh, leaves are sometimes being eaten by the emerald ash borer, and it does just a little bit of a notching on the edge of the leaf. So you won't, you have to look pretty closely, but that's one symptom that we see that the emerald ash borer does. Another thing uh, that we can see on this trunk are some D-shaped exit holes. Now the emerald ash borer is in a larval form most of the year, and then it uh, turns into an adult. As it turns into the adult, it, it uh, chews its way out, and the hole that it makes is in the form of a D. There's a lot of other bores that, that can affect trees, there's actually a native ash borer, but that one uh, just is a, a round circle. So that's another key. If you see some D-shaped holes, you might have emerald ash borer. Another thing that we see on this trunk are something called galleries. This is where the larva has fed and secreted something called frass, and they make these S-shapes. There aren't too many borers that feed on the cambium like that does and make those S-shapes. So there's about four things that are really characteristic only of the emerald ash borer. This tree obviously has all of those symptoms. Epicormic sprouts, D-shaped emergent holes, S-shaped galleries, the notching on the leaves. Why are ash trees important, you might ask? They are a major timber species across the United States. It's found in virtually every of the lower 48 states and uh, very prevalent east of the Rockies all the way to the east coast. Pennsylvania is very populated with ash trees. We have white ash, green ash, and black ash in Pennsylvania. Green ash probably being the most prevalent. Uh, it has also been planted in landscapes as a nice shade tree for your backyard. It's also prevalent on city streets. It's a popular street tree. So it's important. We don't really want to lose it. It's going to have a significant impact. Uses of the ash wood, uh, you might not know this, are most prevalent. Uh, it's the most common use for wood to form baseball bats. The Major League Baseball is having a 
a conniption about this right now. They're trying to switch to maple because of this, and bats are breaking a lot more frequently. Ash is a nice, fairly light wood, but very durable, very strong wood. That's why it makes a good uh, baseball bat. It's also used for tool handles, rakes and shovels and hammers. It's used in some furniture and a lot of flooring. So it has a lot of uses, and we're surely gonna miss the ash tree when it goes. How to identify an ash tree. A couple simple characteristics can really narrow it down. First look at the branch structure. Ash trees have opposite branching structure, meaning the leaves and the smaller stems come off the main stem opposite each other. And the leaf itself is a compound leaf having five, seven, maybe upwards of nine leaflets per leaf. So if you have opposite branching structure and a compound leaf, you're about 95% certain you've got an ash tree. We first heard about the emerald ash borer from our neighbor. He let us know about it because we have a lot of ash trees and he wanted to, to let us know that they're not going to last that long. I originally heard about uh, EAB, uh, emerald ash borer, whenever we lived in Nebraska. It wasn't a difficult decision to save the tree and spend the money. As you can see, it's a big, beautiful tree. Uh, with a lot of foliage to it. It gives us a lot of shade and really adds a lot to the property. Uh, when I first found out I had an ash tree, it did not even dawn on me to cut the ash tree down. Um, I love trees and so my first thought was what do we need to do to uh, treat the tree to make sure that it stays healthy. Uh, the ash tree in my yard is extremely important to me. I love trees and I will do anything I can to make sure that my trees stay healthy. Uh, but I would also say that all of my trees in my, uh, in my yard are extremely important to me. The tree is very important to our landscape. It, again, it gives a lot of shade. We uh, have had rope swings hanging from it that would go out over the bank so our kids could swing back and forth and it's just uh, an astounding sight when it uh, has all its leaves out. I did not realize that all ash trees were uh, susceptible to EAB. I was aware that it was extremely dangerous to the tree, but I did not realize that it would affect all ash trees. We, we were told that almost all the ash trees were going to be killed by the emerald ash borer, and that there was, wasn't much we could do about it except to have it treated, and that it was going to affect all the ash trees, which is a real crime. The ash trees are going to die and therefore we can either treat them or remove them. Unfortunately, there are no alternatives. If you wanna save your tree, we need to treat it. And let me go through the treatment options. We can treat the tree with an insecticide that is incorporated into the ground, the soil around the tree that's then taken up by the roots and the tree is then protected for one year. The other treatment choices are to treat the bark. We drench the bark, the lower five feet or so of the bark all the way around with a, another material that's absorbed through the bark and taken into the tree and that will also protect the tree for one year. The third treatment choice gives us a two-year window of protection but there we need to drill into the tree and inject a material, an insecticide that's taken up through the tree that way but that one does last two years. So those are the treatment options. Each of those though require different dosages depending on the season of the year, also the size of the tree, and also the impact that emerald ash borer is already having on this tree. So therefore, you really need somebody who's professionally trained, such as those of us at Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care. We have nine certified arborists on staff, well-trained, well-versed on what to do, which treatment choice to select, and if you do not choose a treatment option, you seriously do need to consider taking the tree down and again, sooner than later, if you wait until the tree is dead and then say, okay, I'm going to take it down, ash wood gets very, very brittle when it dies. And therefore, if it's a larger tree, it may not be climbable. Therefore, your cost structure will go way higher because we might need to bring a bucket truck or a crane in to remove the tree. It'd be unsafe to climb and remove. So if you have any questions at all about what to do with your ash trees, please feel free to contact us. We'd love to give you some advice, free consultations. We'll travel anywhere in South Central Pennsylvania to discuss your ash tree or trees, let you know what the treatment options are, if they're savable, or if they just need to be removed. So contact us via our website at heritagelawnandlandscape.com. We'd be happy to help you out in any way possible.